Welcome to What If I Survived, a mini series on chance theories where we talk about what would happen to your favorite characters if they never died in the Transformer Cinematic Universe. This episode is brought to you by Lemmy Bro 66, Glitch 0 0, Zeka AAA, Tanolan Ponton, Mark Morgan, and Hightower to Decepticon Christian. And today's character that we're going to be talking about is Devastator. So in theory, sometime in between the events of Transformers and Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, the Constructicons came down to Earth. As you all know, once these 10 Constructicons combine, they can form the Devastating Devastator. Now, if you do not know, there are actually two more Constructicons that fall into a subgroup, Demolisher and Skipjack, but we never saw them combine to devastate. To fix this, I came up with a theory that there are primary and secondary Constructicons. Primary Constructicons consist of Mixmaster, Hightower, Payload, Buckethead, Long Haul, Rampage, Overload, Scrap, Scavenger and Scrap Metal, and the secondary group consists of Demolisher and Skipjack. And these two would only combine into Devastator if Rampage and Scavenger were absent because they share the exact same body type as Demolisher and Skipjack, and I do not associate these guys with being Constructicon clones because they have different color schemes, while the Long Haul Mixmaster and Scrapper clones are identical to their actual Combiner counterparts. But the Mixmaster, Long Haul, and Scrapper drone lack the combining ability and are used mainly for foot soldiers. So eventually, once the Constructicons land on Earth, they find themselves ironically in a the construction site. Mixmaster orders the constructor cons to scan their vehicle modes. Mixmaster scans a Maximet mixer. Longhaul scans a green caterpillar 773B dump truck. Payload scans a yellow caterpillar L250 dump truck. Scrapper scans a caterpillar 992G front end loader. Scavenger scans a red Trex RH400 mining excavator. Demolisher scans a white Trex RH400 mining excavator. Hightower scans a Kalepko CK2500. Crawler crane. Rampage scans a Cow Pillar D9L Bulldozer. Overload scans a red modified Kamastu HD465 7 articulated dump truck. Skipjack scans a red Cow Pillar D1ON Bulldozer. Scrap Metal scans a Volvo EC700 C Crawler Excavator with a special crane attachment to lift up metal rods. And lastly, Buckethead. He scans, well, according to the TF Wiki, an unknown construction shovel. So this vehicle may not exist, but it's some type of bulldozer. You'll be amazed how long it took me to find all these names. Finally, once the constructor cons finish scanning their vehicle modes, Mixmaster tells the constructor cons to split up. He tells them all to travel to Shanghai to eliminate any Autobot forces. He also demands that Overload, Hightower, Rampage, Payload, Buckethead, Scrapper, and Scavenger stay in the construction site, but also to destroy the vehicles that they took the form of and imitate that vehicle that they are portraying until the assault on Earth is a go. And the other reason why Mixmaster wants them to stay behind is because it would help them adapt better to their surroundings. Now, the last of Mixmaster's orders was for Scrap Metal, Long Haul, and Skipjack to join him to get aboard the Bayos Freightliner to later revive Megatron. And we will get to this later. So going by the events of RTO, Demolisher eventually makes it to the construction site in Shanghai using various routes that will not get him that much attention. And he mainly traveled at night because no one would see him. So eventually, Ness and Ironhide show up when Demolisher is trying to blend in. Seeing the threat that he's in, Demolisher transforms and smashes his gigantic metal hands into the ground, sending concrete pipes everywhere, which some of those pipes killed Ness soldiers. After this attack, Demolisher goes into his unicycle mode and breaks forth. While Demolisher is in this panic, he's conducting a whole lot of collateral damage. This is when Ness knew it was time to release Optimus Prime to take down Demolisher. Eventually, Optimus Prime gets the upper hand on Demolisher, and with the help of Ironhide, they kill Demolisher. But what would happen if Demolisher got away? So let's rewind a bit where he's running. So once he flips over the overpass, Optimus tries to grab onto his head, but he fails, and he falls off Demolisher, and Demolisher rolls away like the meme master that he is. Now, eventually, Demolisher will make a route to a New York construction site to wait for Mixmaster and the squad. But we will let Demolisher go on his jolly way. Now, back with Mixmaster and his squad. So, they eventually make it to a seaport of some sort, and they load themselves onto the Bayash Freightliner. And, they're gonna make their journey on reviving Megatron. Now, in the Bayash scene, I want to point one of the biggest continuity errors that I could find in Revenge of the Fallen. And to show off this error, here's a clip from my Constructicon Misconceptions video. In this scene, I want to point something out. In the boat, we see Long Haul, Mixmaster, Scrapper, and Skipjack. Now, in the next scene, because Ravage lands next to Skipjack, 
but if you take a closer look, Skipjack's colors completely change, which means he's now Rampage because Rampage is yellow. And also, where Scrapper was, is replaced by Scrap Metal. And then, in the next scene after, where they jump off, it's back to Mixed Master, Long Haul, Scrapper, and Skipjack. I have no explanation for this, except that it was a continuity error. And that's what I think would put it back. Once Mixmaster and his squad make it to Megatron's deceased body, Grapple needs some parts to fix Megatron, so they kill Scrap Metal. Now you may say, wait, Scrap Metal? That's Scrapper. Well, theorists, yet again, this is another continuity error. And in my How Scrap Metal Survive video, I proved how this is Scrap Metal and not Scrapper. Here is a clip from that. And this is proven when Scrapple says, Me, ah, kiss a little one. On the size charts, the Scrapper drone is way bigger than the Mixmaster and the Rampage drone, or if you want to call him Skipjack. But if you look at Scrap Metal's concept CGI model, he looks roughly a bit smaller than Mixmaster, even though there is no exact height. But if you look at his vehicle mode, the Volvo Crane, it looks like Scrap Metal is bigger than Mixmaster, but we never see the mixing drum of Mixmaster, and that vehicle component can completely alter Mixmaster's size because those are his shoulders. So clearly, this is Scrap Metal. But now he may ask, how did he survive? Later to go on to combine into Devastator. Welp, here is a simple explanation from my Scrap Metal video. And my question to you is, how in the world did he survive from getting ripped apart? Well, a long time ago, I posted a video on how Bonecrusher, Blackout, and Brawl return in a later film. And I'm going to be using that logic that was in that video to explain this theory. So what I basically said in that video was, the energy that revived Megatron also revived Bonecrusher, Blackout, and Brawl. But I never mentioned the possibility of Scrap Metal returning. But now using that logic in that video about the Shard, I can conclude the Shard brought him back and that's the reason why you can see him in the Devastator scene. And that's the reason on how Scrap Metal survived. Now once Megatron is revived and he goes on to kill Optimus Prime, Mixmaster and his squad later make their way to New York, where they meet up with Demolisher. Once the assault is a go, Mixmaster sends a signal to the other Constructicons to come to New York. Once Overload hears this, he orders the Constructicons to transform while there's still humans operating inside them. As in Constructicon fashion, they destroy everything in the site. Scavenger uses robot mode to travel because it's a lot faster than driving. The others at the construction site transform and follow to Demolisher's path of destruction because it's the fastest way to New York. When the wave of Decepticons are coming to Earth, Mixmaster orders the Constructicons to wreck havoc around the city. Mixmaster goes on his own way to knock off the American flag from the Boston Bridge as a display of dominance, while the other Constructicons are causing collateral damage around the city. Sometime after the Fallen's message to the world, the other Constructicons show up behind Scavenger and transform. Mixmaster gets orders from Megatron to go to Egypt because that's where the Star Harvester is. Once the Constructicons make it to Egypt, they camp at a nearby quarry, but the key is that they spread apart so it looks less obvious that something's up. Once they're spread apart, Mixmaster tells Skipjack and Demolisher to go interrogate Sam's parents that got kidnapped by a Decepticon protoform. Once Skipjack and Demolisher make their way to the Decepticon protoform, the protoform hands over Sam's parents to Skipjack, and Demolisher says to them that he will kill them if they resist, and if they told everything, they would get sent free. So Sam's parents spill about Sam's childhood and some other events in Sam's past but this info was not useful to where Sam's location was. And Sam's parents pleaded that they did not know where Sam was at the moment. They also said that the last place they saw their son was at his college. Skipjack hesitates on killing Sam's parents, but instead he fulfills Demolisher's promise. But the catch is, instead of letting them go, he will keep them a little bit longer until we found Sam for himself. So he transforms with Sam's parents inside him, and he scouts the area. Once Megatron calls his assault on the Autobots, Demolisher makes his way to find some Autobots to fight. He later finds Jolt, Sideswipe, and the Twins. And this is where an epic battle is about to begin. So once the Demolisher finds the group of Autobots fighting Decepticon Protoforms, he storms into the group, smashing one of his large tires at them. Luckily, the Autobots can move out of the way before getting squished. Skids and Mufflap begin to climb one of the Demolisher's arms. As the Demolisher is trying to get them off, Sideswipe and Jolt see this as an opportunity to shoot at the Demolisher's face in hopes of stunning him. As they do this, the Demolisher brings up the arm that Skids and Mufflap are climbing on, and... The shot from Jolt and Sideswipe hit Mudflap, making Mudflap fall off. As Skids climbs higher on Demolisher, he shoots at one of the support beams that holds one of Demolisher's massive tires in place. Demolisher lets out a grunt, and with both of his gigantic metal
metal hands. He grabs Skids and pulls him apart, the same way Megatron did to Jazz. Mudflap screams no, and he latches out his hook, hitting the Maulster in his right eye. As the Maulster is distracted with his face injury, Jolt latches out his whips, and he electrocutes the Maulster, bringing him down to the ground. And Sasipe springs out his blades, going for the Maulster's face. The Maulster lifts up his massive arm and strikes down on Sideswipe, killing him instantly. As Jolt is in shock seeing one of his old friends go, he starts to get mad and electricity starts to spark out of him. Until he sees Mudflap going towards the Maulster. In the nick of time, Jolt tackles Mudflap before the Maulster could smash him the same way he did the Sideswipe. Jolt tells Mudflap that they have no shot of winning. As Mudflap resists, the Maulster gets back up. Seeing this, Mudflap comes to his senses and the two drive away, saying that they will get their revenge one day. As the Maulster fully gets back up, he rolls away from the scene, grunting about his eye injury. Now moving back on to Skipjack, once Starscream notifies Sam is around, he lets Sam's parents go. He later listens to Sam's story, but he's unimpressed. And he's about to attack, but that was Skipjack's biggest mistake. And he also got one of the most brutal deaths I've ever seen in the Transformers cinematic universe. But what would happen if Skipjack never died? Well, let's go back to the beginning of the fight, and this is what would have changed. So when Sam yells, Skipjack looks up and he shoots B in the chest which knocks him over the building. Skipjack hops over the building where B landed, and B uppercuts Skipjack before he can land on him. As Bonebee's about to shoot Skipjack, Skipjack trips B with his tail, and then he whips Bonebee. Seeing the rage that Bonebee has when he puts on his battle mask, Skipjack decides to break for it, and he hops away hoping to find the Maulsher. Bonebee confused but more worried about Sam's safety, he goes back to Sam instead of chasing down Skipjack. Skipjack later goes behind their army line to talk with the Maulsher. They discuss about one day dreaming that they can actually combine into Devastator. Now back to Quarry, it's time for the Constructicons to combine. Mixmaster gives them the order, and they quickly group up in one place, and they start to combine into Devastator. Now all the events will be the same that they were in the movie, but the only thing that would change is the twins not being there, because of previous events that were explained in this video. So Devastator has a clear path to the Star Harvester, but first he warms up his Vortex Grinder, which fun fact, and I'm quoting from the TF Wiki, it states, Using an artificial black hole, Devastator can suck in nearby objects. Once they reach his plasma core, they are broken down by extreme temperatures and turn into molten stew. All useful materials are absorbed and the rest are expelled from his back, end quote. Once Devastator Devastator is done warming up his Vortex Grinder, he makes his way back to the Star Harvester, and he starts to remold the pyramid until the Star Harvester can be used. But, it all ends for Devastator once Simmons calls the Navy, and the Railgun kills Devastator. But what would happen if the components of Devastator never die? Let's rewind back to the pyramid scene, and Simmons is calling on the phone. But the military commander denies his message, thinking it was a prank, and he hangs up. Simmons knows that he's in defeat, and he leaves the pyramid, telling the military to aim for Devastator with their tanks. But it's no use, because Devastator's armor is too too strong, so Megatron calls off. Devastator wants a Star Harvester is a fourth of the way visible. And the reason why they let it a fourth of the way visible is to show a symbol of fear. Once Devastator is called off, he starts to make his way to the front lines, and he's ready to kill some Autobots. And this is around the time when Prime is getting Jetfire's parts. So during the time Devastator was on the pyramid, Ratchet developed a device called the Immobilizer. Now, the Immobilizer might be similar to you from Transformers Prime, and it's the same weapon but the difference is, it's a Garnet, and once on impact, it explodes immobilizing the circuits of a Transformer, but eventually, the effects will wear off. So some time passes and the Star Harvester is destroyed, and the Fallen is killed. Once Devastator can see some Autobots in his path, he opens his Vortex Grinder, ready to kill. Ratchet seeing this, he tosses his weapon into the air, and it gets sucked in by Devastator. Once it explodes, Devastator falls to the ground, immobilized. Megatron calls on a peaceful retreat, and Decepticons follow Megatron's lead going into the shadows of the desert, including Devastator once the immobilizing effect has worn off. Ironhide questions Prime why they left this weapon alive, and Prime responds by that the Decepticons called on a peaceful retreat, and enough damage was done. And that's how Prime would have been if they kept his G1 counterpart personality. Finally moving on to Dark of the Moon, in the African scene, all of the Constructicons are there. Megatron requests Scavenger, Overload, and Rampage to be used as backup for the Dreads. Scavenger remembers how Demolisher did as much collateral damage as he could, and he got away with it, so Scavenger underestimates the power of the Autobots, and he goes in full speed with his robot mode. And because Sideswipe died in this story, he's getting replaced by Ironhide in the freeway chase. And for Rampage, he's ahead of the group, planning a surprise attack, while Overload is waiting for Bone And this is how the new freeway chase would have went. So as usual, the dreads pull up and transform. But when Hatchet got hooked by Dino, Scavenger came out of nowhere, smashing the street, and he picks up Hatchet in his hand. Because Dino is still attached to Hatchet, the velocity of Scavenger's grab flies Dino into a nearby building. 
stunning him. As Scavenger and the Dreads are going down the street, B and Ironhide go in their stealth modes and Dean requests that Optimus Prime should get onto the scene. Ironhide and B are fully in their stealth modes now, and they shoot at Scavenger, but Scavenger turns around and he's speeding fast towards Ironhide. Ironhide, in a nick of time, transforms and jumps onto one of the monster's stabilizers that holds his bottom wheel in place, shooting at it. And then Optimus Prime comes speeding down the freeway, and he transforms to grab onto Scavenger's face, not failing like he did with Demolisher. From all the damage Scavenger took, he's put off balance, and he falls on the freeway. As he falls down, Rampage sees it all, and he transforms into robot mode, and he hops onto Optimus, knocking him down. And then he starts to whip at Ironhide. Ironhide charges at Rampage, trying to tackle him. But Rampage is too fast, and he makes Ironhide trip. But in this solo victory, it was not long when Optimus Prime came behind Rampage, driving his sword through his back. This infuriated Scavenger, and he grabbed Ironhide and was ready to pull him apart. But with fast thinking, Optimus shot Scavenger in the head, killing him instantly, and his lifeless arm dropping Ironhide to the ground. Dino finally drives Optimus Prime and he transforms saying, Did I miss anything? Now for the rest of the scene, it would cut back to the freeway chase, and everything would stay as normal. But the only difference is Bombi's driving down the street with no other Autobots. And he's also still shooting at the dreads. But none of the dreads die. Which would lead off to the Mexican standoff of Ironhide and Dino fighting the three dreads, and the two Autobots would end up winning. But let's rewind where Bombi jumps in the air to protect Sam from the truck. Once Bombi's in midair, Overload comes out of nowhere grabbing him and tackles him to the ground. This would lead to Sam hitting the ground very hard, with him only suffering a broken leg and a few arm fractures. Once B gets back on his feet, he confronts his spider-looking Decepticon, and he goes for the joints, trying to shoot all of them off. But it's no use, so B gets his battle mask on and he's ready for a real fight. He jumps up into the air, punching Overload in the face. This makes Overload very angry, and he starts to pull at B. But before Overload could get any good progress, B shoots out one of his eyes. This makes him drop B to the ground. Then he unleashes his claw, and he flings Bone B to the ground. Bone B eventually gets the upper hand on Overload, and he shoots off Overload's claw. And the claw lands right next to Sam. Overload screams in pain, and then he drives off, leaving his claw behind. And then the fight would be done, while Bone B helps out Sam, and he drives him to a local hospital. Now fast forwarding, once Ironhide is killed, and the Autobots are exiled, the invasion of Chicago is a go. Mixmaster and the other Constructicons are furiated that Scavenger and Rampage died. So Mixmaster recruits Demolisher and Skipjack to join the Devastator team. The Constructicons are still angry at the deaths of their former teammates, and they all lie an oath to destroy as much of the city as they can. Devastator is devastating the city, he's pushing around buildings and he goes on busy streets opening up his vortex grinder, sucking in civilians and their cars. Fast forwarding when the Autobots are back, Jolt and Mudflap have a new color scheme. Jolt is now gray and Mudflap is now black with orange stripes. And they got these colors after Revenge of the Fallen. Optimus Prime orders the Wreckers to distract Devastator so Devastator can follow them when the Autobots can come up with a plan to take down Devastator. Optimus also picks the Wreckers because they are race cars and they can outrun Devastator's Vortex Grinder while in vehicle form. Still on this note, Optimus Prime orders Jolt and Mudflap to take out any weapon systems that Devastator has. As the Wreckers are racing down the city, as planned, Devastator follows them. Once Jolt and Mudflap have a clear shot at Devastator, they go for the missile launchers on his back. Devastator grunts as each one is broken, but still he goes after the Wreckers. Next, Jolt and Mudflap go for the arm and leg defenses. Mudflap goes for the arms and Jolt goes for the legs. They're both successful of taking down all the weapon systems that Devastator has. And this gives Devastator a lot of pain. Seeing this, the Wreckers transform and shoot Devastator, but their ammo does not do any good against Devastator unless they take out his shield generator. The Wreckers signal Joel and Mudflap by saying that the head is vulnerable on Devastator, and if they can shoot it in the right spot, it would turn off Devastator's shield generator. So Mudflap, remembering the thought of his brother's death, he jumps onto Devastator's face, and he starts smashing it, trying to disable the shield generator. As Mudflap damages it, Devastator screams, and he turns on his vortex grinder. Mudflap latches out his grapple hook to Jolt, and Jolt holds him, but as Mudflap gets sucked in, Jolt loses his footing, and he flies towards Devastator's vortex grinder. Luckily, Jolt could grab the top of Devastator's face before going inside. Seeing that Jolt's about to lose his grip, Mudflap shoots at Devastator's vortex grinder from the inside. This causes Devastator to turn off his vortex grinder, and he spits out Mudflap, Jolt still hanging on Devastator's face. Seeing that Mudflap is alright, Jolt executes the shield generator on Devastator's head. This causes Devastator to go wild. He tries to hit Jolt with his gigantic hand, but Devastator ends up hitting himself in the face. Jolt sees his opportunity to get away from Devastator, so he does, and he meets up with Mudflap and the records, and they stay under the beast. Now, do you remember the driller scene? Well, Optimus leads the driller towards Devastator, slamming it into the back of Devastator. The driller goes through Devastator, and it instantly kills the driller itself, Overload, Mixmaster, and severely damages Demolisher. 
This forces the Constructicons to uncombine and scatter all around. As Constructicons that can still make it out alive run for their lives. The broken Demolisher lies on the floor trying to get back up but he fails because of his injuries. Mudflap confronts him saying this is for skids and then he shoots him in the head. Now this infuriated Skipjack and Skipjack ran in anger towards Mudflap whipping him in the face. But then Jolt tackled Skipjack off of Mudflap's body making Skipjack crash to the ground. For this he shoots Jolt and he gets back up. But before he could kill Jolt, Roadbuster's chainsaw goes straight through Skipjack's head and his body falls dead. Jolt thanks his comrade for saving his life and Roadbuster helps him up. Now at this point the Constructicons have scattered from the area. Optimus orders the Autobots to kill any remaining Constructicons so there won't be any more devastators in the future. So the Wreckers accept the challenge and they hunt down the strongest Constructicon that is still alive, Hightower. They find Hightower in vehicle mode trying to hide from them, but it does not trick the Wreckers. But little did the Wreckers know that there were two more Constructicons lurking behind them. Once the Wreckers were about to ambush Hightower, Top Spin and Robuster are tackled by Buckethead and Scrap Metal. Once Leadfoot sees them get tackled, he shoots Buckethead, which severely damages Buckethead. This causes Hightower to transform. He is mad, and he swings his wrecking ball at Leadfoot, knocking him down. In the meantime, Roadbuster and Topspin are fighting their opponents. Roadbuster does a backflip in the air around Buckethead, and he slices off one of Buckethead's arms. Seeing this, Scrap Metal breaks free from Topspin's grip. He tries to run to help him, but Topspin grabs him with his claw, and he smashes him to the ground. For this injury, Buckethead is about to slice at Roadbuster with his hand, but Roadbuster saw this attack coming, so he ducked, and then he shot Buckethead in the head, killing him instantly. As Topspin comes to Scrap Metal's injured body, he asks Scrap Metal if he has any last words. Scrap Metal responds by saying, You monsters killed my family, and you will pay one day. Someone will stop you in the future from your terror. Topspin laughs, and he crushes Scrap Metal's head with his claw. After this solemn victory, Robuster and Topspin turn around, hearing a cry of help from Leadfoot, and he's about to get smashed by Hightower's wrecking ball. With quick thinking, Robuster chops off the chain from the wrecking ball, and Topspin gets their leader out of the way, and the wrecking ball hits the spot that Leadfoot was at. Leadfoot thanks Robuster and Topspin, and he orders the wreckers to kill Hightower. Hightower replies by saying, Come and get some. Leadfoot shoots at Hightower's face, while Topspin goes for damaging one of his legs, and Robuster plans to go for the gigantic arms. As they go for their assigned areas, Hightower screams in pain, but grabs Topspin and and chucks him at Leadfoot, injuring both Leadfoot and Topspin. And then Hightower grabs Roadbuster, and he swings him around, and then he slams him to the ground. As Hightower is about to step on Roadbuster, his leg gives out, due to the damage that Topspin put on it, and Hightower falls to the ground, missing Roadbuster by inches. And because of the impact of this fall, his right arm also gives out because of Roadbuster's damage to it. In pain, Hightower tries to swing his good arm at the Wreckers, but it's no use. Leadfoot walks up to Hightower, and he puts him down with a gunshot to the face. And Leadfoot signals Prime that they defeated Hightower and two other Constructicon targets, and that there are only three more Constructicons that remain. Moving on to Long Haul, he escapes to an army of Decepticons, but all of Long Haul's hopes disappear as he sees Optimus Prime coming from the sky, and he attempts to shoot at Optimus for his revenge, but he later gets killed during Prime's rage. But what would happen if Long Haul never died? Well, let's rewind to the point where Optimus Prime is coming in. Thinking that he may die, Long Haul breaks for it, and he drives away, and I'll be all for Dark of the Moon. Now let's move on to AoE. As you all know, Cemetery Wind grew to power, killing Transformers, and this is the role that Long Haul would play. So he's getting hunted down by the TRF, but because of his vehicle, it is too slow, so he transforms and fights the humans. Because of Long Haul's extra armor, the bullets that the humans use don't have that much of an effect, so Long Haul's ripping through the human defenses until Lockdown shows up. Thinking that Lockdown's on his side, Long Haul confronts him, but until he sees Lockdown's face turn into a gun, Long Haul knew it was time to fight. So Long Haul got his blades out, and he was ready to rumble. As he charges towards Lockdown, Lockdown shoots him in the arm, disabling it completely. In a scream of pain and anger, Long Haul tackles Lockdown, and the remaining forces of Cemetery Wind are adding the injuries to Long Haul while shooting him. As Lockdown is pinned to the wall, Long Haul slashes at Lockdown's chest, and that's the reason why Lockdown has those marks on his chest. Lockdown grunts in pain, so he gets a spark extractor and kills Long Haul, leaving Cemetery Wind to clean up the body and give it to KSI so they can turn him into Transformium. Now moving on to Scrapper. So after most of his teammates died, Scrapper went with the rest of the Scepter to Khan's forces to stop the Autobots. But then Prime showed up, slicing and dicing everyone in his path, and Scrapper was one of the victims to Optimus Prime's blade. So this current storyline in mind, what would happen if Scrapper never died? So still during Dark of the Moon, after the Constructicons split apart, Scrapper found his way to an abandoned warehouse, where he met up with Payload. Scrapper asked Payload if they should still be Decepticons and how it's over for them because most of their teammates died. After some talking, they're ashamed of being Decepticons and they want to change their ways. But before they do that, they want to get out of Chicago, and that would be the last scene we would see of them in Dark of the Moon. Now moving on to AoE. In AoE, we still see them in Chicago, which would mean they did not make any good progress getting out. They're discussing that they want to become Autobots, 
Trent and they want to change their name. Scrapper changes his name to Trent and Payload changes his name to Canopy. They also scan new vehicles during this time. Trent scanned a Caterpillar 320 Excavator and Canopy scanned a 400 Deary dump truck. And later in the film, they meet up with a girl named Izzy that lost her parents in Chicago after the battle between the Autobots and Decepticons. And they also meet up with a little robot named Squeaks and they all become friends. And that would be all for AoE besides some shots of them fighting and escaping. But until the last night, everything changes. Once a TRF are formed, it was too risky for the two regular sized Autobots to hang out in the same place. So Izzy put Trench on a special mission to find a safe place to stay. And she, Canopy, and Squeaks would join up with Trench in a few weeks after he finds a secret place to hide. So accepting his mission, Trench made it out of Chicago and he met up with Kate and the Autobots at the junkyard. So some time passes and Trench gets to know everyone. While Canopy, Squeaks, and Izzy are still on the move from the TRF. But one day it all changes and the TRF get an energon reading from Canopy. While he was trying to protect some kids, the TRF thought he was trying to kill him. And Canopy ended up getting shot with a missile and he went out in a sad way. Well, at least Payload went out trying to protect the humans while in its past he killed them. Now moving back on to Trent. Once Izzy and Squeaks come back, he was happy to see them. But until we heard that Payload died, he, Izzy, and Squeaks mourn for their brother in arms death. Fast forwarding when the Autobots have to evac, Izzy and Squeaks are sad that they have to leave Trench behind. But it was Trench's choice to be a hero and stand up to the Decepticons. Trench and Izzy share a few last words until Izzy and Squeaks leaves the area. Once the Decepticons appear, Megatron shoots at Hound, and Trench goes for Megatron. Megatron grabs Trench and says, Pathetic Autobot, and then realizes the events of Dark of the Moon, and says, How could you betray me, Scrapper? Hound was in shock that Trench was actually Scrapper, and he gets out of the scene because he knew he would die, and he could not hold off the Decepticons by himself. His last words to Trench were, Sorry, Trench, and then Hound sped off. Megatron's grip on Trench tightens, and Megatron responds by saying to Scrapper, Why did you betray me? Scrapper responds by saying that Megatron's ways were wrong, the Decepticon cause was unhonorable, and the Autobot cause was honorable. Hearing these words, Megatron ripped out Scrapper's spark, and he crushed it, and Scrapper's lifeless body fell to the floor. Well, that's all for this episode of What I Survived. If you enjoyed, please give a big fat thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. And if you have a character that you want to see in this series, don't forget to give a comment and I'll get to that character as soon as possible. Well, this has been Trans Theories, signing off. What do you call it to the Transformers, more than meets the eye, Transformers, robots in disguise.